right, welcome to lesson three, where our goal today is to be able to identify the domain and range of a function. So let's start off by defining those two terms, domain and range. The domain is the set of all inputs of a function, and the range is the set of all the outputs for a function. Typically, the domain is the x values of that function, where the range is the y values. All right, let's take a look here at a real-world example. So we're going to look at the value of a silver dollar. The input here is typically going to be the left column. It's very rare you see somebody put the inputs on the right column. Um, or if it's a horizontal table, you might see it as the top row. Um, but this is really our inputs right here, x. And our outputs are going to be these values, uh, and that's y. So in 1921, the silver dollar is worth $250. Um, a 1922 silver dollar is worth $40, etc. Um, so the first question they ask us is, is this a function? Well, we would need one input going to multiple outputs. But for every year here, all I see is one output. Um, I don't see like 1922 a second time with a different number. So it looks like there's one output for every input. That would mean that, yes, this is a function. We learned that in the last lesson. Now, as far as the domain, this is a little tedious, but this is what you got to do. The domain is the list of all or the set of all inputs. So I'm going to make what's called set notation here, um, and I'm just going to take off every one of these numbers and write them down. So 1921, 1922, 1923, and then all those others, and we'll throw the set notation to end it. And this just says the set of all the x's, all the inputs. Now for the range. The range should also go in numeric order, but this one's actually going to be a little bit easier because there's a lot of repeated values. We have all these 40s. You only have to write that once. So I'm going to try to write this in numeric order, and I'm going to take care of all those 40s, and I just have to write them once. So I write 40 one time. Now there's a 42, 65, 250, and 500. And there's our range, all of the y's. Now moving on to number two. They ask us to identify the domain and range for this function right here. Now this time it's not given as a table, but rather ordered pairs. Again, I'm going to set up a little set bracket notation, and I'm going to look for all of the inputs, which are all the x's. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And that's my domain. Now for the range. I'm going to look for all the y's. Negative 5, negative 7, negative 9, negative 7, negative 5. I'm going to go smallest to biggest. The smallest number here is actually negative 9. It's the most negative. Then negative 7. It happened twice, so I'm going to cross off both of those. Then negative 5, which also happens twice, so I'll cross off both of those. And there's my answer, my domain and my range. Now let's do the same process with a graph and then a mapping. For the graph, what I would suggest doing is just tallying off where the x's are for each of these points. So this point here has an x of negative 6, and it has a y of negative 7. All I did was I just counted um, how many spots down from the origin it was. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now this will be an element of the domain because that's the input for that point where this will be an element of the range because this is a output for that point. Let's do that for the other points. This point has an x of negative 3 and a y of positive 3. This point has an x of 1 and a y of 1. This point has an x of 3 and a y of 7. This point has an x of 5 and a y of negative 3. This point has an x of 7, and it also has a y of 3, just like one of the other points. Now, reading left to right, my domain would be negative 6, negative 3, 1, 3, 5, 7, just from looking at that graph. The range would be negative 7 from down there, then negative 3. I'm working my way from bottom to top now. Then 1, 3, and 7. Even though two points had that y value of 3, we only write it one time. Now you could also do this problem by looking at each point and listing out an ordered pair. 
For example, this point right here would be negative 3 comma 3. Um, and then you would treat it just like the last problem we did that had ordered pairs. I kind of like to draw all over the graph and it makes it easier to see for me. I think the mapping is probably the easiest because it's already in numerical order. These are my inputs and these are my outputs. Inputs are domains, so 3, 4, 5, 6. And outputs are the range, so negative 2, 0, 4. All right, this is a pretty easy lesson to summarize. What we learned today is that the domain are the inputs or x values of a function, while the range is the outputs or the y values of that function. If you took away anything else from this lesson, write it down now. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.